Welcome to Unit 1, Lecture 2. So in this lecture, we're going to look at community structures, and we're going to look at some of the interactions that actually affect community structures. Uh, we're going to, this is broken down into two parts, so we're going to focus on some of the interactions in this, um, most of the interspecific uh, interactions here, and then we'll talk about some other interactions in the next lecture. Remember, we're looking at this hierarchy of life. Okay, and for this lecture, we're actually focusing on the community. So when we say community, remember, that's all the different biotic factors interacting with each other. So in a community where you've got, um, in this picture, we've got elephants, giraffes, um, the tree, the grass, so on and so forth. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about a community. There are different types of interactions. So there are interspecific, which we talked about a little bit, and that's between members of different species. And here we have some of them, and we're going to go over all of these in turn. So don't worry, I just wanted to kind of put an outline here, so to speak, um, but we're going to go over all of these. So we've got competition, predator prey, herbivory, and symbiotic relationships. Now, symbiotic relationships are special, okay, uh, um, as, a, as an interspecific. Uh, interaction because they're very close and very specific. In the case of a symbiotic relationship, um, that those two organisms have to be together. Like um, it can't, uh, a tick can't go biting something else um, if it can't live on its blood. So on. So like I said, we're going to talk about all of these, but just so you know, okay. And then these last two are going to be part of the next lecture. It just was going to get too long, so I broke it up a little bit. But the intraspecific competition is when we talk about members of the same species and then invasive species, which is a whole new problem. Well, not a whole new problem, but it's a whole big problem that we've been dealing with. Okay, But like I said, for this lecture, we're focusing on that group. So interspecific competition is when organisms of different species fight for limited resources. If you were going to have a party, okay, let's say you had a party and you invited 10 of your best friends. So you, in, you decided you were going to buy pizza to have at the party. Okay, so you, let's say for 10 people, you're probably going to buy maybe three pies, right, just to make sure a little bit of a cushion. All right. So all of those 10 people come and then more people show up. So if you only buy three pies, you might have a little bit extra for a couple people to come. But then when you start getting four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten extra people, 20 people can't eat three pies, three pizza pies, um, unless you start getting really careful and stingy with the pieces and you start cutting them up and all sorts of other stuff. So when we have limited resources, organisms have to fight over it. In interspecific competition, they're fighting for space or shelter, water, food, sunlight, etc., anything they need. Okay, and this is influenced by our carrying capacity, which we're going to talk a little bit more about, um, more specifically, and what it does to a population. But a carrying capacity is, you know, it's how much, in, how much the environment can support. So based on the resources that are available, how many z in this picture, zebra or antelope or starfish, okay, you've got mussels, you know, all this other stuff, how many of them can live there? Okay, how many plants there are to eat, how much sun there is, how much water there is, okay, so on and so forth. So, a, and then, so resource availability comes into that interspecific competition, especially for something like water. All right, if we look at this picture down here, okay, all of these guys on the African savanna, the zebras, the antelopes, they all need water. Okay, and they all need clean water. They all need drinking water, fresh water. So it can't be, you know, they can't have, um, they can't have dirty water. They can't have seawater. So they all have to share that fresh water. So what happens is in dry, and let's say in drier seasons, that water is a resource that becomes more limited because there's less of it available because it's been dry. So not every organism is going to be able to uh, drink um, all the same water okay, or the same amount of water. So they start fighting for it or whoever gets there first, all right, that kind of stuff. So resource availability ends up creating something called, you know, creating that carrying capacity and then the organisms fight. All right. 
So that's competition. Then we've got predator and prey. So in predator and prey, we're trying, somebody's trying to eat and somebody's trying to avoid being eaten. Uh, sometimes this is actually referred to as an evolutionary arms race. Because one evolves to get faster. So if we look at this graph here, we've got the fox and the rabbit. Um, snowshoe hare to be specific. Okay, so you've got the rabbit evolves to run faster, so then the fox has to evolve to run faster. And so they just keep going on it. So what happens is this is generally um, an evolving relationship, not just because it's evolutionary, but also because it changes from season to season based on supply and demand. Um, so carrying capacity and supply and demand. So you can see here, we've got this graph, um, this graph, where the green line here, all right, that's the hare, and the red line here is the fox. Okay. So you can see, whoops, I did not realize I was going to erase all of my notations. Hey, look at that. Hope you got those down. <laughs> um, so you can see here with the hare, okay, we've got some years where the hare is going, doing really well. All right, so carrying capacity for that season, so it must have been a good season. Uh, more rain, uh, maybe some, maybe it wasn't as cold, so there was more grass to eat or flowers or whatever. Okay, and then, so then the fox, we get a little more of the fox. All right, so as supply goes up, the hare, which would be the supply here, okay, then the fox can go up. All right. And then if the hare here, you can see this crash here, all right. As the hare population crashes, then the demand for the, the hare goes up, but the supply goes down. So then that causes the fox to crash. Right? And so that's a predator-prey relationship. Herbivory is basically just eating plants. All right. Now, obviously, this is kind of like a predator prey, except for the fact that plants don't move. Um, however, plants do have a variety of defenses, um, and they have uh, ways to recover and also to avoid being eaten. Um, plants have different ways. They can actually cause digestive upset to certain organisms. Um, and that's something they do. They also have physical defenses, like these thorns here. Okay, and the other thing about plants, which is really interesting, which we're starting to understand a little bit more out, they actually can release compounds that warn each other. So your grass, uh, that, that fresh cut grass smell, that grass is actually warning your neighbor's grass um, that it's been attacked. <laughs> and warning the rest of the grass in the neighborhood that, hey, I've been attacked by something. Now, obviously, the grass doesn't know that it was a lawnmower, okay, and your neighbor might mow the lawn at the same time. Your neighbor might not mow the lawn at the same time, um, but in that case, it thinks it was attacked, and so that's just something interesting that we're starting, like I said, we're just starting to actually understand this. This is new research that's been out for maybe 30 years, Okay, so it's relatively new, which is kind of cool. Um, that's the other thing about science is we keep learning stuff. And then we've got these symbiotic relationships. So remember I said these symbiotic relationships are really, really close relationships that are really close together. So there are three types. Okay, so we've got the mutualism. So the mutualism is a good, it's a good relationship all around. So we got a plus plus situation here. All right, um, one species benefits and so does the other species. So the clownfish and the anemone, if you think about finding Nemo, E. coli bacteria in our digestive tract, okay, because the um, different types of bacteria actually help us digest, uh, help us digest some of our food. Um, if you've ever been on an antibiotic and had some stomach upset, you've either been constipated or diarrhea, that can be because we've messed up our microbiome, which we're going to talk a little bit more about this year as well. Um, but they're helpful to us. We've got all sorts of good bacteria for us. Uh, if you uh, have ever seen a, a coral reef cleaning station, okay, that's a mutualism. Then we've got co uh, commensalism. The cattle and the cattle birds, the sharks and the remora. Um, I guess the cattle and the cattle birds are probably a little more closer to a mutualism than a commensalism. Um, I guess they kind of straddle it. This is more of a plus neutral. So one organism is really happy, the other organism, meh, could care less, all right? 
uh, couldn't care less. Um, the organism, meh, it doesn't really help or hurt it. It's just uh, like the sharks in the remora. So sharks have this little fish that actually suction cups themselves to the shark. It doesn't hurt the shark. They're not actually taking anything from the shark other than a ride. Uh, you'll also see barnacles on whales and other big marine animals. You, they, uh, barnacles will attach themselves. They don't really do much. Um, somebody might argue that they hurt uh, the organism a little bit because it makes it harder to swim, but so far nobody's noticed any devastating effects. And then there's this bacteria called Staphylococcus, uh, which lives on our skin. So in our on our skin, it's hanging out. It's great, uh, but once it gets into our into our system, it's a problem. So it's it's a fan of being on our skin, and it doesn't bother us at all. And then there's parasitism. So this is a plus minus relationship. So somebody's happy, somebody's not so happy. So um, it generally doesn't cause death because if it caused death right away, it wouldn't be good for it, but it does make us sick. So ticks and tapeworms are really huge examples of parasitism. Okay, so that was it. Here's your wrap up. So you're actually, you can write this down on your paper or you can do it right in Blackboard. I don't care, either one is fine. But what you need to do is you need to look at each picture. So one, two, three and four and tell me what kind of relationship you think each picture is representing. So we've got a butterfly on a flower. All right. We've got a looks like a gopher and some birds with it looks like he's got a little piece of food in there. All right. We've got a lynx and a rabbit. And then we've got a whale and some barnacles here. Okay, these are all barnacles. They're kind of, you know, all crusty looking. So what you guys need to do, go to Blackboard and type in what you think the different relationships are that you see in these pictures. Remember, it is graded, so make sure you get that done. All right, see you in class.